Welcome to the Interconnected Universes of Transmedia IP. My name is Alex Amancio, and I was formerly Creative Director on Assassin's Creed. Today, I'm the Founder and Chief Creative Officer of Reflector Entertainment. Now, this presentation is specifically on transmedia, and how I believe large-scale universes deployed across different media are really the way of the future. But before we get into that, let's have a look at today's entertainment landscape. Now, I think everybody would agree that we live in a world of shifting business models. And from TV to film to print to video games, everybody's scrambling to do so. And it seems to be a race from products to service. And the problem that everyone's facing is the same one, feeding that content beast. The challenge becomes, how do you create enough high quality content to justify people paying for your platform or for your service? Now, that really is the crux of this presentation, and we might have a solution. So first, let's look at the nature of that content beast. If you look at the industry's perspective, it's all about segments. It's about the film industry, it's about the gaming industry, it's about the print industry, and so forth. But if you look at the consumer's perspective, all consumers see today are worlds. They see Star Wars, they see Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Dragon Ball Z. They filter their content consumption through the lens of the worlds they want to inhabit, whereas the industry is still focusing on the media that they're producing. Now, why is that? Why the dissonance? Well, I really believe that this is because of the world in which these large corporations were created, the 20th century. It was a world of push media. You had a very limited number of channels you could access the audience with. You know, there was radio, there was film, there was television, there was newspapers, books, magazines, comic books. And then a few companies controlled the output uh, towards the audience. And so if you wanted to create content, you needed to go through one of those majors. Today, it's very different. People access content through these screens of varying sizes. And these screens are essentially a window into a world of content, into an ocean of content. Today, we live in a world of pull media and the audience can navigate that ocean of content whichever way they want, which makes the capacity of corporations of pushing content at people more and more difficult and more and more expensive. And granted, today, certain majors are still able to do it, but it's becoming ever riskier and ever more costly. So is there maybe a different way? How do we shift from a worldview of media centricism into a world of story world centricism? Let's look at the story world solution. Now, first, let me clarify what I mean by transmedia as opposed to cross platform or cross media. Now in the latter, you create a franchise by adding different products from different media. It can be a film or a series of films and video games, comic books, etc. But when you look at everything together, no real meta story emerges. Versus transmedia, where you can certainly consume every single product individually, but if you put them together, a meta story emerges, which means that depending on the products that individual audience members consumed, they have a different perspective on that meta story and on the IP itself, which means that it encourages varying points of views, which encourages debate and conversation on forums. So it encourages a proactive audience and a proactive fan base rather than a passive one. Now there's three basic rules to transmedia. The first one is a distinctive and coherent universe. And this is really the foundational rule of transmedia. Now, as a concrete example, take these two action films. On the one hand, you have Die Hard, and the other you have John Wick. Two great action films. I would argue that Die Hard is the better film, but Die Hard does not have transmedia potential, whereas I believe John Wick does. Now, why is that? So Die Hard is all about this New York cop, John McClane, goes to LA, to reconnect with his estranged wife and goes to her Christmas party. All of a sudden, terrorists take over the building and John has to save everybody and stop the terrorists. If you remove John McClane from that context, it's pretty much set in the real world. Nothing makes the Die Hard universe distinctive from the world that you and I live in, except for the terrorists and John McClane. The creators of John Wick very carefully crafted world building into the meta story. Uh, of the film. They introduce these coins that can be used as uh, sort of a secret currency between this international group of assassins. There's these special locations that operate by their own rules. You know, there's this place called the Continental Hotel and etc. There's essentially many different layers of myth and rules that are unique to this world that make it self-contained and self-coherent. And one could very easily imagine that you could at one point have a another John Wick film or even a video game without the title character and the universe would still feel like it's distinct. You don't need John Wick 
to make the John Wick universe unique. That's really the fundamental difference. One has world building, the other one does not. Now, most uh, cross-platform IP have this, from the Avengers or Marvel to uh, Harry Potter or Star Wars. These universes uh, all operate by their own mythology, they have their own distinct characters, and they're self-contained and self-coherent. The second rule of transmedia is the complementary storytelling. If you look at those same properties that I just mentioned, from Marvel to Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, or even James Bond, all of these properties come from another medium before uh, reaching films. And the films are usually adaptations of the original content. The Infinity War series is an adaptation of a comic book series from the 90s. Harry Potter are books, same for Lord of the Rings and even James Bond. One difference would be, one unique difference would be Star Wars, where I think that that universe does have a lot of unique content across different media. Um, you know, from board games uh, where you can do space battles to video games that are set thousands of years before the movie trilogy to TV series that, uh, you know, occupy a different genre than the actual film series to comic books and novels. It's a very, very broad franchise that does have unique storytelling across different media. But it's still missing the third rule, which is the fan base or community reciprocity, which is generated by the fact that there is sort of a meta story going on and leaving space and room for the fans to essentially become active participants in the IP. Now, all of these different properties do have wiki pages and they have active fan bases, but it's more of an archival function than an actual proactive function. And I think that this proactivity can be created by adding that meta story and letting fans debate and theorize and put stuff together. Obviously, when doing that, you have to be very careful because the individual products have to remain accessible. But by adding this layer, I think that you create the connective tissue that allows for fan bases to organically grow around the franchise. So we're talking about a shift here. And the shift is from the traditional tentpole model that I think was really pioneered by Disney in the 50s, where you put um, your primary product at the center of everything and then every other product is considered ancillary to it, um, ways of amplifying or increasing revenue for that main product that you're building. And we need to shift from that to a story world model, which instead of putting a product at the center of everything, you essentially put the world, the universe, the IP, uh, and then use every single product uh, like um, a way of manifesting that, that one universe. Think of it like the story world is the symphony and each single product becomes uh, a section, all playing in harmony, all at the service of your central story world or IP. Now this is a great theory, but does it actually make any business sense? Let's look at the traditional um, business model, essentially the 10 pull model. You have a product, a very expensive product, and you need to market it. So you essentially create a campaign around it, and the campaign creates buzz before the product release, and then hopefully you get to a maximum amount of buzz right when you release it, and then you try to amplify and maintain that buzz as long as you can to make that tail as long as possible. Typically when Hollywood or, or any industry talk about transmedia, what they're talking about is really a cross-media marketing campaign, which consists usually of creating a ecosystem of ancillary products that you time with the launch of your tentpole. And the purpose of these products is essentially to try to create buzz, more buzz before the product launch and try to maintain the buzz longer after the product is launched. And this is usually where transmedia begins and ends. But is there a different way? What if instead of attaching your transmedia initiatives to a product that has a life cycle, a beginning and an end, what if you were to attach the transmedia initiative to something like a service, something like continues in time? So your product ecosystem essentially is separated into cycles or call them seasons, and then you essentially build upon a service that never ends. And the service is the story world. It's the transmedia itself. The products just become ways of maintaining that constant flow of content for the audience. And rather than just focusing on just one medium and putting all the weight on that one medium and then using the other one just to amplify the release, you treat every single medium like it's your main medium. Now, it doesn't mean that they're all going to make money or that they all should be intended to make money. but if they don't make money, maybe they create retention or maybe they create um, acquisition. By playing these different products like sections in an orchestra uh, and always have the right KPI for the right product, you can essentially populate this service with um, uh, content that is always interesting for the audience. Now, what we're talking about is a new kind of platform. It's a new kind of, of entertainment platform. 
But let's look at the modern content platform landscape. Now, most platforms today are single media content libraries, you know, from Netflix to Prime Video, Hulu, or even Xbox Live. These are very wide because they have a lot of content, but very flat because they focus only on one medium. Netflix focuses on film and television, Xbox Lives, it's video games, right? So it's very limited. If you look at emerging new platforms like Disney+, Plus, they're already narrow because they've split everything into story worlds, which is, I think, more adapted to the consumer's perspective, but it's still limited to audiovisual stuff. What if you could do something even narrower and deeper? What if you could focus a platform on just one story world, but go as deep as the consumer wants? So what if one could listen to a podcast, read a book, a comic book, play a game, watch a TV show, or a film all in the same platform, delve as deep as they want into the world that they want to consume. So that's what we're pioneering at Reflector. We're piloting this, this new platform with our original story world that we're creating, the Unknown Nine. Unknown Nine is something that we're building across novels, podcasts, comic books, video games, films, uh, and a slew of digital series. And everything is being hosted on our original platform, which doesn't mean it's exclusive to the platform, you can actually still consume all of the products individually where you would usually get those products. But we believe that by coming into our platform, the fan has a unique experience. You can really go from one to the other in a seamless way. And our platform is also built to leave room for the consumer to play an active part in, in the actual act of consuming the products. So this approach, I think, is the way of the future. And it's certainly not limited to Reflector. I think that this could be done with every single uh, story world out there. And I think that this is where every single story world will go in the future. And I think this is a first step into content that really transcends media. Thank you.